a review of some headlines in today's newspaper from around the world with Glutter Rise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Great Malabites. I'm not a Malabite, but I have to say, I just have to say that. Great Malabites. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Yes, Good let's start the review with this day. Nigeria's newspaper of record, the lead story, with 43 <laughs> days to go. INEC vows election to hold as scheduled. Commission not contemplating postponement. Cancellation, says Yakubu. 93 million voters to decide at Tiku, Tinubu, Obi, Kwan Kwan So, others fit. Lagos leads with 7 million registered voters. Kanu, Kaduna Rivers follow. Yes, INEC handing over the voters registered to the political parties and giving the breakdown of uh, the voters registered. 93.4 million eligible voters to decide the fate of Nigeria. Yes, who will be the next president come February 25. But will all these voters turn up? That has always been the problem. Now, The Guardian is also reporting the story. INEC assures poll must hold, says 93.4 million eligible to vote. Delete under age voters. Lagos Kanu maintain lead south East lowest. Commission begins airlift of sensitive materials to states. Yes, you can see the photograph in front page of The Guardian. Nigerians still waiting for, to pick their voters' card. This, this, uh, the center here is Fagba Collection Center in Lagos. So Nigerians should persist. Collect your voters' card because there lies your power to decide what will happen. Uh, after May 29, who will be our leader? Now, the Punch newspaper, uh, INEC final list, Northwest, Southwest, top 93, 93 million voters register. Now, above the masthead, Punch is reporting PDP 6 alliance with 11 parties. Yes, yesterday, the same Punch reported that APC Mall's uh, alliance with APC, APC, Mod Alliance with smaller parties. I hope this is not the only role these small parties want to play, to go into alliance with the big uh, parties, as it were. Now, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper, given the breakdown of the uh, registered voters, present voter registration, 93,496,000. Thousand and eight to political parties, male forty nine million and fifty four thousand one hundred and sixty two. That's fifty two percent, fifty two point five percent of voters are male, while forty seven point five percent female youths. That is ages between 18 and 34. That's 37,000, 37, 37,060,399. That's 39.65% of voters are youth within the youth bracket. So the youth should have a say, but will they come out to vote? Yes, yeah, the photograph in the front page of the Nigerian Trib Tribune Ogeye floating market in Delta. It's a novelty because riverine communities des deserve modern facilities. And the governor of uh, Delta State, Ifan Yokoa, has made that possible. And yes, yeah, somebody said I don't commission market, but this is a market with a difference. A floating market in the middle of a river for riverine communities. And that was commissioned by the Chairman of the PDP, Iyoshi Ayo, the Ulu of Wari, Ogiame Atuashe III, in attendance, and of course, um, the traditional ruler of um, an Ijo community there, also um, there at the commissioning. Now, the Vanguard newspaper um, polls 93.47 million voters to participate. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, I will just keep the lead story. Kebi adoption. Parents selling properties to pay 100 million naira ransom. And this, we're talking about 
girls that were abducted 20 months ago, students of Federal Government College burning Yauri in Kebi State. So these girls were under the custody of the Federal Government, in Federal Government College. They kidnapped, they are still, 11 of them are still in captivity. Of course, ages between 12 and 16 years. 20 months, they are still in captivity. President Buhari, I hope he takes note. Of course, we we'll also have one student of Bethel Baptist High School, uh, Kujama, still in captivity. Of course, we know that some Chibok girls still in captivity. Lea Charibu, still in captivity. An assignment, the president also must accomplish before he leaves office because he promised at that meeting with uh, Catholic bishops yesterday that he will improve security. Good to know that he believes that there's still work to be done when it comes to security beyond degrading Boko Haram. And of course, these Nigerians, young Nigerians who are in captivity, must be brought out of captivity. Now, the nation newspaper, uh, above the masthead, APC, PCC challenges article on alleged corruption health status. Now, if we just look at the foreign newspapers quickly, the foreign newspapers, yes, the Times of London, go to work and keep disability payment, yes. Rishi Sunak is concerned that 9 million in act, economically inactive UK citizens. They are being incentivized to go to, back to work. People will be allowed to keep claiming sickness benefit after returning to work and will be offered tax breaks to getting them a job. Many don't want to look for jobs. So look for a job, you still get, you get tax breaks. And even if you are sick, once you get a job, you still keep some of the benefits. Hmm. <laughs> Too much spoon food <laughs> yes. but No, but of course, Rishi Sunak is concerned that if you don't get more people to work, the economic growth is promised he may not achieve. Mm. Well, the Guardian newspaper, fury as millions on prepaid energy meters plunge into cold and darkness. Last year, 3.2 million um, people were left with cold and darkness in their homes um, as a result of their credit running out. Mm. That's about one in every 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah. So I, I'd like to point out this story again. Yes. It's as if we, are not, we don't even understand the severity of what is happening. The Lasso Chief Medical Director, Professor Adi Tokumbo Fabang, who said 115 nurses left their jobs for foreign lands in the hospital. We're having a mass exodus. I think one of the papers, I think it was a Tribune or something, that put a really uh, good writer here on the front page. We're having a mass exodus, or the vanguard, if my memory serves me right. We're having a mass exodus of doctors out of the country. And we're not saying anything about it. Brain drain, it says. Nigeria is over 1,800 doctors, healthcare workers, in December 2022. This is a ticking this time bomb. one bar. month alone. One month alone. This is a ticking time bomb. Teachers alone. are to follow suit. And okay. teachers are to follow suit with the new UK scheme coming up. We should watch it. And these are the problems that the new president will face. How can we attract our talents, keep them here? I am not sure we've trained up to 100,000 doctors since the NMA was formed in this country. And you have over 1,800 healthcare workers, 150 senior nurses, experienced CADA, leaving the country as well as other medical as personnel, well as other medical personnel. Lab technicians and, and there's, an, impen there's an impending strike coming on too by doctors still the same challenges coming up we should watch all of this and real quickly uh, quickly going to home because this concerns me and, and you know isn't it funny that and that's the diversity of nigeria me a yoruba man is saying coco is home for me because some part of me too comes from coco in delta there's been another explosion in coco there's been a chemical uh, plant around there. The stories are varied as regards cocoa. But I say that particularly because when it comes to chemical and cocoa, I get iffy. If you remember what happened in, in the late 80s, I think 88 or 87, 
with the cocoa chemical incident. I mean the toxic dump. They talk the toxic dump from in cocoa. Uh, Italian so firms. so for an Italian firm. That really hit home for me. I just hope everybody out there is safe in cocoa, worry not local government area. Yeah. Well, just to say that some have food but cannot eat, some have um, some can eat but have no food. The UK, they are begging them to go to work. Nigeria, we are begging to get some work. <laughs> they are being incentivized to go and look for jobs. Oh, thank you very much, yes. Mr. Manuel Feni.